Hello and welcome to the Strong Acids and Bases pH and pOH calculation screencast. This is known as Lesson 8.03 in your course packets. I am Mrs. Willie, and what I would like you to do before I begin is go ahead and get your course packet out and go to page, let's see, in our course packet, the end of 8.03 would be page, or if you like to take notes just on a piece of paper, please go ahead and get out a piece of paper. But start by getting your course packet out because you're gonna take notes today. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with some review of what Miss Wilson spoke about last week in her screencast, specifically the auto-ionization of water. So we learned last week that water is amphoteric, which means that it can act as an acid or a base, which means that water auto-ionizes into the hydronium or hydrogen ion. We know that hydronium ion and hydrogen ion are the same thing, they are equivalent. So whenever I see H plus or H3O plus, I know that those mean the same thing or, or sorry, and the hydroxide ion concentration. So in my chemical equation here, and you notice that the arrows go both directions, which means that this equation is going back and forth from water molecules to ions and vice versa, from ions to water molecules. So I'm gonna have you write down our first equation and constant that we are going to learn today. So because water auto ionizes, it has the KW, which is the ion product constant. This is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. Just like all other constants in this class, every time I see KW, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th should pop into my head. This is only true at 25 degrees Celsius, but I know that water is going to be equivalent. So uh, the hydronium ion concentration would be one times 10 to the minus seventh times the hydroxide ion concentration would be one times 10 to the minus seventh, which would give me 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. So those are equal in amounts in water which leads me to our first example problem, which is how to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution with a known hydroxide ion concentration. Um, I use guess in my class. It's okay if you don't want to use it. Uh, I'm going to use it to go through these problems because when you start getting into numerous equations that you're learning, I find it helps me to organize them. So guess is given. So what is the hydronium ion concentration of a solution with a hydroxide ion concentration of 4.9 times 10 to the minus third molar? So or, and then is, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? So I have two parts to this question. So my given, we're gonna start with that, is the hydroxide ion concentration is 4.9 times 10 to the minus third big M or molar or moles per liter. My unknown is the hydronium ion concentration. So I'm gonna use that equation that I just learned uh, I do want to say, let's assume that this is at 25 degrees Celsius for all of my example problems and assume that all of your problems in your book are at 25 degrees Celsius. So you would use these equations that I'm teaching you today. So the equation that I'm going to use is KW is equal to 
the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. And the next is substitute. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either substitute the numbers into your equation and then solve, or you can rearrange your equation first, then substitute your numbers and solve. I like the second one because it helps me to cut down on calculation error because I've already rearranged my equation, so it's less math steps for the problem. So I'm gonna rearrange my equation first, which I need to rearrange to have the hydronium ion concentration by itself. So I'm going to divide by, sorry, the hydroxide ion concentration. And I know that if I do it to one side of the equation, I must do it to the other side of the equation. So this now becomes hydronium ion concentration is equal to Kw over the hydroxide ion concentration. And I can substitute my known numbers in now. So I know that the Kw is equal to that constant value, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And then my hydroxide ion concentration is 4.9 times 10 to the minus third. And then I'm going to just solve by plugging that into my calculator. Uh, always remember when plugging into your calculator that you need to use parentheses, especially on these older calculators. I know the newer ones, you don't have to worry so much, but on the older calculators that we have at school and the one like the one I have here, I'm gonna for sure put in parentheses. So I'm gonna take 1.0 times 10 to the, remember the caret is the power, negative 14, and I'm going to divide that by 4.9, times 10 to the negative third, which gives me a answer of 2.0408 times 10 to the minus 12th, and my unit again will be molarity here. And just like all other equations we've used in chemistry, if I can go to significant figures, then I need to. And so we are going to assume this is a measured number. This has two significant figures in it. This is a constant, so I'm not going to use it to determine my sig figs. Next is, is I'm doing division only, so I am going to stay on sig figs. And so my reported answer would be to two sig figs, which makes this 2.0 times 10 to the minus 12th molar is my hydronium ion concentration. The next part of this problem is, is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? So we have three scenarios to help us to determine if a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. So if the hydrogen ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration, then the solution is an acid. If the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration, then it is neutral. And if the hydroxide ion concentration is greater than the hydrogen ion concentration, then it is a base. So I'm going to look back at my two values that I have here my hydrogen ion concentration and my hydroxide ion concentration. So I have to look at those exponents. That's the most important part. And a negative three is larger than a negative 12. So this tells me that this solution is a basic solution. So now let's move on to the next part of our lesson, which is reviewing again a little bit of what Miss Wilson talked about in the last screencast and a little bit about what we've learned already this year, specifically electrolytes and acids and bases. So I want to start with a strong acid. So in a strong acid, I have 100% ionization. 
which means that like nitric acid in an aqueous solution, it will ionize into the hydrogen ion and the nitrate ion 100% of the time. So you notice this time my arrow is one direction. So I go from nitric acid to the hydrogen ion and the nitrate ion. For these, you need to memorize those strong acids that we had in your course packet. This also is a strong electrolyte because I have all of those ions in my solution. So HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, H2SO4, and HClO4 are all strong acids. And reviewing what Miss Wilson talked about last week is that this would also be considered an Arrhenius acid because it ionizes into an hydrogen ion. And so that would also be characterized as a Arrhenius acid. So I wanna talk about pH, which was the potency of hydrogen. So now that we've talked about the auto ionization of water again, and a strong acid, we need to think about what this means in terms of calculations. So when I have a solution that has a high hydrogen ion concentration, it has a low pH. And if it has a low hydrogen ion concentration, then it has a high pH. So these are opposite of each other. So that means that the best math model would be a logarithmic function because they are inverse or opposite of each other. Now remember, when I'm talking about pH and I'm looking at the pH scale, when I'm going from an eight to a seven, I'm doing this to the power of 10. So not times 10, to the power of 10. Or maybe, I don't know. I've done this screencast a few too many times. So just know that when you're going from eight to seven or seven to eight, so if I'm going from seven to eight, I'm losing hydrogen ion concentration to a power of 10. And if I'm going from eight to seven, I'm gaining hydrogen ion concentration to the power of 10. This is going to help me to understand I have some new equations that go along with this. So the first equation that goes along with this is pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, the reason why I have to put a negative in here is because we're dealing with really low concentrations of hydrogen. So in chemistry, we know that a one molar solution, because a log function of one is going to give me zero. So anything more concentrated or at a concentration of one molar or higher is going to pretty much be 100% hydrogen ion concentration for our purposes. So we're looking at solutions that have less than one molar concentration. So anywhere between zero and one molar concentration is what we're focusing on for these. So I also want to talk about the opposite of that. So if I have to find the pH of a solution, I'm going to use the negative log. I have to do negative because this is a very small number. Remember, my exponent was negative, and I want my pH to be a positive number, so I have to put the negative in here. So the anti-log or the inverse operation of a log is the exponentiation. So 10 to the negative pH, and I have to do that negative to the pH again because this is smaller and I want to get that negative exponent. So I have to make that a negative number in order to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So next, I want to talk about the pOH scale and strong bases. So a strong 
Acid ionized, a strong base dissociates. So this example would be potassium hydroxide dissociates into the potassium ion and the hydroxide ion. Again, my arrow is going one direction, so this happens 100% of the time. So potassium hydroxide I, uh, dissociates 100% of the time, as do all strong bases. Um, group one metal hydroxides and most group two metal hydroxides, except for beryllium hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide are strong bases, which means 100% dissociation. So I have lots of ions in my solution. So the pOH scale is the potency of hydroxide. It too, is a logarithmic function because the greater the hydroxide ion concentration, the lower the pOH, the lower the hydroxide ion concentration, the lower the pOH. Now remember, when Ms. Wilson was talking to you about the pH scale last week, as I go up on the pH scale, I am losing hydrogen ion concentration and gaining hydroxide ion concentration. And then as I go down, I'm gaining hydrogen ion concentration and losing hydroxide ion concentration. It's the same thing for the pOH scale, except I'm thinking opposite. So as I go up on the pOH scale, I'm losing hydroxide ion concentration and I'm gaining hydrogen ion concentration. And as I move down on the pOH scale, I'm gaining hydroxide ion concentration and losing hydrogen ion concentration. And again, um, I forgot to mention that this would be characterized as an Arrhenius base because hydroxide ion was produced in solution. So potassium hydroxide would be characterized as a Arrhenius base. So I want to introduce you to our next. For our purposes, we go from 0 to 14, but as you can see on our pH and pOH scales, those logarithmic functions will go on, and so there really is if you can have negative numbers both ways, but for chemistry, we want to focus on that range from a pH of 0 to a pH of 14. So pH plus pOH is equal to 14. Again, that is only at 25 degrees Celsius. And I want to talk about just like with the pH, in the strong base, you have pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Again, you need that negative here because I want my pOH to be a positive number. And the anti-log would be used to find the hydroxide ion concentration. I have to put that negative number in front of the pOH so that I can get that smaller value for the hydroxide ion concentration in the exponent. This leads me to our next example problem, which is how to calculate the pH of a strong acid. Also calculate the pOH and the hydroxide ion concentration. So what is the pH of 0.14 molar nitric acid? And I'm going to go ahead and use that guess again for me. So this time they gave me a given of 0.14 molar, which is equal to the hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration. This can also be written as 1.4 times 10 to the minus 1 molar. So they gave me the hydrogen ion concentration because I know that HNO3 is a strong acid 
and it's going to 100% dissociate into the H plus and the NO3 minus. The unknown for what I'm trying to solve for is the pH and then eventually the pOH and the hydroxide ion concentration. So my first equation I'm going to use is pH is equal to, and the reason or the way I can figure out which equation I'm going to use is that it has both my given and my unknown in it. So in this equation, I have pH and hydrogen ion concentration. So that's how I'm going to know I'm going to use this one. It's a little tricky because you could just, both of these have both of those variables in them, but I already know the hydrogen ion concentration. I'm not trying to solve for it. I'm trying to solve for pH. So pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So this time I don't have to rearrange my equation at all. All I have to do is substitute my numbers in and solve. So pH is equal to the negative log of 0.14, and I'm just going to type that into my calculator. I have a log button on my calculator, so make sure to remember to put the negative first log, and then always use your parentheses, so parentheses 0.14 gives me an answer of 0 0.85. 387. Now, this brings me to significant figures. This is important when we're talking about a pH because I know that that beginning number is going to tell me what my, this is just telling me uh, what my pH is. And so my pH is one or very close to it. So I need to look at the significant figures and that tells me how many decimal places I need to go. So in this case, they are the same in that I'm gonna have two significant figures and I'm gonna go two decimal places, but that is not always the case. So remember, if I had a pH of 1.85387, I would not report my answer to 1.9, I would report it to 1.85 because the number of significant figures in your concentration is equal to the number of decimal places in your pH. So this becomes 0 0.85. I'm done now with the first part of that problem. Now I need to figure out how to determine the pOH and the hydroxide ion concentration. And I want you to know there are always different ways you can do this. You don't have to do it my way. Um, in fact, I encourage you to come up with your way of solving these equations. So I am going to use for my next equation, because I need to solve for the pOH, I have... I know the pH and I know the pOH and I have this equation so I know that I can solve or sorry I know the pH and I need to solve for the pOH so I can use this equation to do so. So pH plus pOH is equal to 14. It has both my known and my unknown in it. I'm going to rearrange it this time to get the pOH by itself. So pH plus pOH equals 14. I'm going to subtract the pH from this side. I have to do that to this side as well. So pOH is equal to 14 minus the pH, which is then 14 minus 0. 8, 5, and I strongly, strongly encourage you to keep the long numbers. Don't use your rounded number to help reduce that calculation error. So 14 minus 0.85387 gives me an answer of 13.146.
Now, again, I'm going to report this to two decimal places because my original value was two significant figures. So the POH would be equal to 13.15. So now that I know the POH, I can solve for the hydroxide ion concentration. This time, I'm going to use this equation instead of this equation because I know my pOH and I'm solving for the hydroxide ion concentration. I'm not trying to solve for pOH. I'm trying to solve for hydroxide ion concentration. So the equation I'm going to use here is hydroxide ion concentration is equal to the anti-log, so 10 to the minus pOH, which is 13.15. And again, it's just the inverse operation on my calculator. So I find my log button, the inverse operation. So I do second, and that should give me 10 to the power of, I have to remember to do that negative, 13.15, which gives me 7.079 times 10 to the minus 14 molar. This time I'm back to a concentration, which means the number of my decimal places is how many sig figs I need here. So my answer would be 7.1 times 10 to the minus 14 molar is my hydroxide ion concentration. So I could also be asked, is this solution acidic, basic, or neutral? And remember, we have our hydronium ion concentration and our hydroxide ion concentration. So I can look at that and go, my hydrogen ion concentration is definitely much larger than my hydroxide ion concentration. So that tells me that this is an acid, but I also can look at pH and pOH. So if the pH is greater than seven, then it is a base. If the pH is equal to seven, then it is neutral. If the pH is less than seven, then it is an acid. So my pH that I calculated was 0.85, and that is clearly less than seven. So that again corresponds that this is an acid. I can also look at the pOH. If the pOH is less than seven, then it is a base. If the pOH is equal to seven, then it is neutral. And if the pOH is greater than seven, then it is an acid. So my pOH was 13.15, clearly greater than seven, and it is an acid. So all three of those told me this is an acidic solution. My last example is going to be about not Always do they give me a concentration at the beginning and I have to be able to solve for these problems not knowing what the concentration of the solution is. So, how to calculate the pOH of a strong base without concentration, also calculating the pH and the hydrogen ion concentration. So, what is the pOH of a solution containing 50.0 grams of potassium hydroxide dissolved completely in 1.50, and that should be liters. My liters has erased off liters of solution. So here, it's a little trickier. I can't just go straight to my equations like I've done before. I have to remember what I learned about in Mr. Gamp's lesson from two weeks ago, which was molarity. Molarity is equal to moles per liter. And then I also have to apply what Ms. Wilson told me last week about the whole dissociation of a strong base. So I know that potassium hydroxide is going to 100% ionize into potassium ions 
and hydroxide ions. And then I also know that these are in a one-to-one -one ratio, which is important when I'm thinking about molarity. So my first step here is to convert, because they gave me 50 grams. So I know that I have 50 grams of this in 1.50 liters of solution. So I need to convert my grams to moles. So 50.0 grams of KOH, and this is just dimensional analysis. My grams are here, then I'm gonna put my grams on the bottom, my moles on top, and that gives me uh, how many moles? I'm gonna use the molar mass to do that. So I need to bring back my periodic table. So in order to solve for the molar mass of potassium hydroxide, I look at the molar mass of one potassium, which is 39 plus one oxygen, which is 15.999 plus one hydrogen, which is 1.008. And that gives me 56.105 grams in one mole, because I know every time I calculate from the periodic table, that is equal to one mole of KOH. So when they are opposite, they divide. So I take 50 times one divided by 56. So 50 divided by 56.105 gives me 0.89. 118 moles. So now, in order to find the molarity or the concentration, or yes, of the hydroxide ions, I have to know how many moles are there. And because my coefficient here is one, then this number is going to stay the same. If I had a different coefficient here, I would have to multiply whatever the moles I have times whatever my coefficient is in my chemical equation. So in this case, it's only going to be 0 0.89118 moles KOH and one mole of KOH, I have one mole of hydroxide ions. So that's going to be 0 0.89118. Again, I did multiplication and division. This is a constant, so I'm not gonna use it to help me with uh, sig figs. I'm gonna use my measured numbers. So this time, three sig figs. So this then becomes 0 0.891 moles of hydroxide ions. In order to find the molarity, I would do 0 0.891 moles divided by the 1.50 liters because I know that I have that many moles of hydroxide in that solution. So 0 0.891 divided by 1.50 gives me 0 0.594. You could keep that long. 0 0.89118 divided by 1.50 gives me 0.59412 because I want to stay with my three significant figures. That would give me a concentration of 0 0.594 molar hydroxide ion concentration, or I could say 5.9 times 10 to the minus one molar hydroxide ion concentration. So now I know the concentration, I can solve for the pOH. And I can bring back my guess. So I have hydroxide ion concentration, which is 0.594 molar. And I need to find the pOH and eventually the pH 
and the hydronium ion concentration. So I can look at my two equations that I have here. I have to decide which one I want to use. Easy to help me. They both have POH and hydroxide ion concentration in it, but I was given hydroxide ion concentration. I'm trying to find POH. So I'm trying to find POH. I'm going to use POH is equal to the negative log because remember, we need a positive POH number of the hydrogen ion concentration. So I'm going to plug this into my calculator. Negative log, parentheses, 0.594, gives me 0 0.2262. Now remember, my molarity was three significant figures, so I need to go to three decimal places in my POH. So 0 0.0226 would be my pOH. Now I'm going to have to determine what the pH is. Again, I will use the equation pH plus pOH equals 14. I know my pOH, so I'm going to rearrange this to get pH by itself. So I'm going to subtract pOH from both sides of the equation, which leaves me with pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH. So pH is equal to 14 minus 0.226. which gives me 13.774. And remember, still have to go to three decimal places. So my pOH is equal to, or sorry, my pH is equal to 13.774. Last but not least, I have to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So, I have to figure out which one of these do I want to use to help solve my equation. I know pH. I'm trying to solve for hydrogen ion concentration, so I'm going to use the anti-log this time. So the equation that I want to use is hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of the negative pH, which is 13.774. So I'm going to put that in second or inverse log 10 to the power don't forget the negative 13.774 gives me 1.6826 times 10 to the minus 14th molarity of H plus ions again I'm going to go back to three significant figures and not decimal places for my concentration so my answer would be 1.68 times 10 to the minus 14 H plus. And again, they could ask me, is this an acidic, a basic, or a neutral solution? So I can use all of my ways that I have learned to look at that. So my hydroxide ion concentration is definitely much larger than my hydronium ion concentration. So this tells me it is a base. My pOH was less than 7, which tells me that this is a base. And my pH is greater than 7, so this tells me that this is a base. I hope you've enjoyed my screencast today, and I look forward to hearing from you this week in office hours. Thank you.